Hello everyone, my name is Mike. In this video, I'll show you how you can set up an Ubuntu virtual machine in AWS and then install a graphical user interface on it and then be able to connect in it with RDP from a Windows machine. So let's get it started. So first of all, what is a graphical user interface you ask? Well, Ubuntu by default is just a terminal. So if I go ahead and install a virtual machine in AWS and then connect to that machine, it will not be like Windows where I can interact with it. it will, it's just a terminal and then I can just write commands in it. Nothing else, just commands. But in Windows, for example, I can interact with it because it has a user interface, it has an interface and I can interact with it. So basically from a terminal, we'll make Ubuntu to look like this. This is an example, it will, we will use a different user interface. But basically this is what an interface is, it's something we can interact and not just a terminal. And we will be able to, to connect in it using RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol from Windows. So yeah, let's start with it. So first of all, we are going to go in AWS. By the way, if you are using Google Google Cloud or you are using DigitalOcean, after you set up the virtual machine, everything else should be exactly the same, okay? So the commands we will run on that Ubuntu machine to install the graphical user interface and the ability to connect with it in it with RDP will be the same. So let me show you and you'll be able to understand when everything should be the same. But if you are using AWS, just follow along with me. So first of all, I'll click AC2. And then we will launch a new instance. And then I'll select Ubuntu Server 20.04 LTS. Now, if you are using another version, it's probably the same if, unless you go too old, like for 18 version, it, it should be the same, but I'm not sure about that. For this video, I'm going to show you specifically for 20.04, but try it. If it doesn't work, let me down the comment, let me know down in the comments and I'll help you out download it in any version. So now make sure it is on x86 right here on the default and click select now i'm going to go with a small instance because i'm only showing you this for the video and i'll delete it afterwards so let's click next so first of all choose your instance type and then click next configure instance details i'm not gonna change anything here but if you want to go ahead same for the storage nothing to change here tags and then on the security group here's what we will add something so first of all we need to add a new rule and we want to allow access to a port that is used for remote desktop protocol so we will do a custom tcp rule and then the port let me check it is 3389 so it's 3389 and that's it now here on the search i'll click anywhere so what that will do is allow access from any ip address so any machine can remotely connect with to it using this port but if you want to use it just for your computer and your ip doesn't change too frequently you can just do it with your IP, my IP, and you should be okay. But if you want multiple people to use it, then I suggest you use anywhere, just it's not as safe as just one IP. But yeah, you can choose whatever you want. So after you have put in the port, now let's click review and launch. That's it for the settings, unless you want to add something, okay? But that's the settings for what we need currently. So let's click launch. Now it will tell you to create a keeper. I guess we can create a new one. And then let's name it, I don't know, let's name it YouTube, YouTube tutorial. You can name it whatever you want. Make sure you 
download it and then save it somewhere securely and make sure you don't lose it because you might lose access to it and then let's click launch instances now it takes some time to launch it so we will go to view instances and it, it says pending once it says running then you should be able to follow along with me so let's wait okay so our virtual machine is up and running by the way just uh, a recommendation make sure you put a name here so you recognize it from the others so i'll do a tutorial okay that doesn't change anything though so make sure you select it now and what we want to do is click connect okay so right here ac2 instance connect now for google or ubuntu it should be the same they should have their own ability to connect to the instance using their online terminal again it should be the same for google and any other provider so make sure you click to connect with their terminal and then for username if they allow you to select one make sure you put root and root is actually what we call an admin user so make sure you do root which which he has all the privilege privileges so click connect all right great now i want to i want to suggest one thing it's best when you will connect with the remote desktop protocol it will ask you to use the username and also use a password now currently our user doesn't have any passwords so i suggest you add one because let's say someone actually get access to that machine actually he just need the ip and he can connect to it after we do the following steps if you don't have put in the settings to only allow your ip address so if you haven't it's best to use a password so how you can do that so to add a password to the user you can do sudo pass wd it's sort for password click enter and it will ask you for the new password and then retype the new password again it's great now let's say you want to add a new user so let's say you have one virtual machine and you want multiple users so to add a new user you do sudo add user and then the name of the user so let's say for example let's put a user called mike and then to add a, a password to it now instead of sudo actually when you create a new user it will ask you for the password so you have to put a password to it so you don't have to create a new password you it asks you by default so just put the password on it and then ask you to put some details for that account you can just leave them empty just click enter and it will fill out the details empty okay so that's it for the user now let me show you what commands we need to run to install all the necessary packages okay so here i have them in my notepad by the way all the commands will be in the description and if they are not directly in the description i'll have a link to them first of all we will run sudo apt update and we just want it, want the machine to be up to date so i'll just copy this so Control c just do Control v and that's it and then click enter let me close that there we go now next step is to install ubuntu desktop and and what that is is actually the graphical interface so that's what ubuntu desktop is now there is multiple versions for it and for now we will install ubuntu desktop but there is a version called x ubuntu desktop which is another graphical interface it looks different you can install either of them for this story i'll do ubuntu desktop or but you can do x ubuntu desktop okay so let's copy this one click here Control v then enter now make sure you don't click any other characters when he asks you to do you want to continue shift y and then enter just click yes okay but make sure you do shift y so up uppercase y okay so it's finally done it took about 10 minutes or about that now next what we want to do 
is install XRDP and what's that you ask? So XRDP is what allows us to use RDP. Okay, so it has it in its name. So let's copy it. Control V, enter. Again, shift Y and enter. Okay, so next step is to check the status of it to make sure everything is running correctly. So copy this command, Control V, enter and if everything is running correctly, it should say active equal to active and running. And it should be like this. You should have similar output, not exactly the same, but similar. So it should say active in green letters and you should be OK. If it says any different, make sure you leave me a comment down in the comments. Now, next, we want to add XRDP to our SSL certificate. So let's do that. Okay, so there is two options. Now, either you can allow this port or you can allow this port and then specifically to your address. Okay. Now, I'll use this one because I want to allow access to any IP address. And have in mind, your IP address changes pretty frequently. So you might want to do any IP address and just put a password or something like that. And put a strong password, of course. So I'll do I'll use this one. Otherwise, use the command down below and then just replace your IP here. Okay, so let me copy this. Control V. And now the last step is to reload. So let's do that. And there we go. So now what we have to do is go on our search bar and then type remote desktop connection, go back to our instances and then copy the IP address. So let's go to public IP for address or private. I'm not sure. Let's try both of them and see which one works. So put your IP address here. And make sure you go to display and lower the display configuration so you should have a smaller window otherwise it takes a huge amount of time to load and actually it depends on your virtual machine but for a better experience make sure you lower your display configuration so that's it now click connect and if it takes a lot a lot of amount of time just click cancel private IP address doesn't work. Let's try the public one. Let's use this one. And there we go. So after you click connect, now you can do don't ask me again, because every time you will connect to this virtual machine, this pop up will open. So you can just click don't ask me again, and then click yes. So now here you should put your username, which by default to be root. And then the password you set, if you haven't set any, um, I think you could just you can just click OK. But if you have put your password, just type your password in and then click OK. Again, if you don't have a root user and you want to log in with any other user, just put your username and again the password for that user. Now, after a few seconds, let me expand this. So. One second. There we go. Okay, so now click next. Again, adjust your settings. I'll just click next, next, and then start using Ubuntu. And that's it. So now you, it, it works like an Ubuntu computer. So you have your UI right here. You can click on activities. So yeah, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments what you would like to see next. Also, let me know if you have any issues so I can help you out. I would really appreciate if you hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future videos.